Oh, welcome back to Monkey Wrench Eng Engineering. This is Mike, and uh, this is going to be an extremely brief um, first tutorial on aircraft. Um, and actually, in this first little snippet, we're going to just look at building um, a very basic first plane uh, for people that aren't familiar with airplanes in KSP. Um, and in 1.05, uh, they do act a little differently than they used to, and admittedly it is probably one of the more difficult things for most people to get a handle on right off the bat. So, uh, using what would be the very starting parts, uh, whether you're playing or career or science mode, uh, we are in sandbox so we have access to everything, but the Mark 1 capsule, the Mark 1 cockpit I should say, is going to be the first one that you have available, and that's what we're going to use. When you open, by the time you've opened that cockpit, I should say, you will have oof, somewhere in here, there it is, the Merc 1 crew cabin. So we'll go ahead and put one of those on so we can take a few people with us. Actually, let's go ahead and make a Learjet. Let's put two of those on there. So now you can take all your friends for a ride. Um, we're not going to put any fuel in the main body, as it were, of this plane, um, mostly because you're going to start with access to the Juno engines, which are quite small. They're the first engine you have available, so we'll put a piece of fuselage on the back of that, just to have that there. And wing-wise, you're going to start not with all this lovely selection of wings. Um, you will have, in fact, very few wings to choose from the swept wings being some of the very first ones that unlock, so we'll go ahead and grab a pair of those. Um, nothing I'm sticking on this plane is going to necessarily stay where I'm putting it for reasons we will go into. Um, but the initial engines you're going to get are the Junos, and you're going to get these tiny little liquid fuel tanks that come with. Uh, do we want to put these on the wings maybe, just to be different? Oh sure, why not? Hopefully those are straight, I guess we'll find out. So those are little tiny liquid fuel tanks. You will open little tiny air intakes as well. Um, the two things a jet engine needs are air and fuel. Those air intakes provide the air, the little fuel tank provides the fuel, and the go is provided by the tiny little J20 Juno basic jet engine. There. Now, in the vehicle assembly building, the space plane hangar, um, you're going to want to have center of mass and center of, and center of lift on pretty much all the time you're designing. Center of thrust, you'll want to check if you're building something that is offset. We're not going to go into that uh, in this little first how to make a plane video. Um, but you will want to have your center of mass in front of your center of lift and probably a little closer together than that, to be honest. Um, but we'll tweak that in a minute. This is obviously not much of an airplane right now, but that's fine. Starting out, when you're at this point, you're not going to have even the nice tail. You'll probably have what I'm using <laughs> right now for a tail, which is a Delta Deluxe winglet. It doesn't look real good, but it works. This is ugly as well. You. Um, Actually, you know what, here, one of the other early parts you will have at this point in your aerodynamic parts is the basic tail connector A, which doesn't want to go on. There we go. Uh, the only problem I find with the tail connectors is they tend to hit the ground on takeoff and break off, but that's okay. We'll, there's workarounds for that. Elevon 1 will be your one control surface you start with. You'll want to make sure you're putting matching pairs of these on the aircraft. You'll, oops, you'll grab them, scoot them into the back of the wing. You can rotate them using the rotate keys. I'm using D in this case. You do need control surfaces so that you can turn and climb. That's actually looking fairly good. Uh, initially, you will not have a selection of landing gear. You will be 
stuck with the non-folding gear, which actually there's nothing wrong with. So put one of the single gear forward. These are steerable. You're going to put a pair of the fixed landing gear. Ooh, not facing that way apparently. Come on, really? Why are you, there we go. You want to put that fair fixed landing gear behind and not too far behind your center of mass. You'll notice they're towed in a little bit here at the bottom. You don't want that either. So grab your rotate tool, rotate them so that they sit square and forward to the runway. Um, making airplanes, you're going to use offset and the rotate tool constantly with angle snap on and with angle snap off. Um, airplanes are all about getting things positioned properly. Now we'll save that for the moment. That's going to be a good little starter plane to learn to fly in. Um, you will have the basic batteries open at this point. This probably doesn't have any worries about running out of juice. Um, I would get in the habit though of slapping a battery on it and if you don't want it sticking out and looking ugly using the offset tool to just stick it inside the hollow tail. Yeah. Turn on the brakes when you're on the runway because the runway is tilted and you will roll. We don't have any landing lights on this which is a shame. T for SAS, Z for full thrust. Fire the engines up. Let them rev up a bit, turn the brakes off, and we're off. We're passing 30 meters per second, 40, 50. Oh, it looks like it'll actually try to take off at 60 or less. Nope, 70. Come on. You can do it, little airplane. Okay, maybe it wants to be about 100. Yeah, it wants to be about 100. This means we actually need uh, more lifting surface than we have. The wings are not sufficient to really support the mass of this aircraft. Well, and frankly, it doesn't help that these engines are tiny. Yeah, we're going to, Valentina's going to get to land it in the ocean because it simply doesn't have enough lift. Oh, lost her battery pack. That's an easy fix. I thought we were going to have to do this, but it was worth checking. The little winglets that I'm putting on, you open very early as well. They're the, uh, the AVR8 winglet. Uh, looking at this plane, our center of gravity is going to move forward as we drain fuel, so that's fine. That'll give us considerably more lift. Actually, we should be fine just with those winglets. The winglets are a control surface as well, so they help you with takeoffs, and they help you with landings, and they help you with turning. So again, brakes, SAS, full power, fire the engines up. Take the brakes off. Now last time it would barely take off at 100 meters per second and then it would plummet into the ocean because it didn't have enough lift. All we've done is added those winglets. Was that enough? I'll find out. Yeah, it'll take off at 60 meters per second now. It's able to climb and gain speed at a fairly decent rate. It's quite maneuverable, remains steady in flight. Let's go to you know, half throttle, see how well it does there. Must be cruising speed if you were 
out looking for spots to do science in, perhaps. Uh, even at half throttle, it is gaining small amounts of speed in a small climb. So I think this is actually quite successful. So the difference between success and failure on this particular plane design were those winglets on the nose. Um, if you didn't want to add those winglets, you could have slid this wing forward slightly. Uh, that probably would have had nearly the same effect, but having more lifting surface was important as well. Uh, with an airplane, if you haven't flown them before, you're doing your turns by using Q and E to roll, and then you're pulling up into the corner the way you obviously would with an airplane. Uh, you don't use D and A if that's your rudder. Oops. Should pay attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see how it lands without, uh, without being under power, because I just snapped the engines off while I was busy looking at my keyboard. So in landing, turn your brakes on. Oh, this actually floats quite softly and gently to the ground. We're descending at 1.6 meters per second. We're losing forward momentum. Actually, this thing's really stable. I, I'm doing nothing. I've literally done nothing. I didn't even have to touch the controls. That was ridiculously stable. So let's let's go back and grab one of these uh, that's has still has engines on it. <laughs> now what's going to talk about landings, and then I crashed it on the landing without meaning to. I guess if you mean to, it's not a crash; it's just a test. Yeah, this takes off at quite quite a low speed, which is nice. We'll just go around and actually land back here so we can look at landing real quickly. And buzz the launch pad as we go past. Make Jeb nervous. I'm sure he's down there looking at rocket parts. Um, again, camera views V, if you hit V, it switches the camera views. Chase mode is probably most useful for airplanes. I find I spend a lot of time in free mode because I do tend to pull the camera around, especially when you're doing things like landing. Actually, this thing even rolls nicely. I'm actually surprised at how well this flies. I'm kind of trying to stall it here to see if it'll. doesn't even stall badly. Let's change, I'm going to actually turn the engines off and see how it works with no thrust dead stick for a landing. Coming in awfully high, we're going to run off the other end of the runway, but that's okay. Ooh, that's not okay though. Flare, flare, get back on the runway. I never claim to be good at landings, obviously. And we'll turn the brakes on. With landings, uh, you'll want to flare to get rid of your excess velocity, basically turning left and right S-bends as you approach, and then you'll want to pull the nose up uh, just before you land to get rid of more velocity, but when you do land, make sure your nose isn't so high that you get tail strike and rip the back of the airplane off on the runway, which is very easy to do. Um, that's basically all there is to basic aircraft design. Center of lift, behind but close to center of mass, Try not to make it overpowered. 
Uh, but conversely, if it's underpowered, look at adding either more power or more lift. You're better off with more lift. More power means your takeoff speeds are probably going to be easily attainable, but your landing speeds will be probably too high for comfort. Um, something like this is excellent to practice in. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it as a way to learn the secrets of flight. And also for landing, all of this uh, lovely flat green area out here around KSC is flat and smooth and you can land on it just fine. You don't have to land on the, uh, on the runway. And starting out, you probably are better off to just aim it for the grass. Once you get a little better at it and you're feeling like uh, practicing your landings, the island we're pointed at right now is where the island runway is that people talk about. There's a little sort of an ancient uh, decaying control tower and a short dirt runway out here um, that does require a little more work to land on. But that's a start. Next, uh, next time around we'll look at the Mark II parts and look at getting near to space. Well, with an ion building and SSTO uh, shortly thereafter. But thanks again. Hope you've learned something new or at least are inspired to play with some, uh, some airplanes. And uh, until next time, have fun. Try not to explode too much. Bye-bye.